So by now you're going to know if you're one of the lucky 16,000 riders that's got an entry into the 2025 Etape de Tour from Albeville to La Plame. 4,300 meters of climbing, 130 kilometers of riding and today we're going to look at some water stops, some danger points and an overall close look at the whole of the course. If the Etape de Tour is on your agenda for next year, eyes down, look in and here we go. Good morning from the French Alps. It's a stunning morning here at Lac Passy. We're already in November and that means it's the time of year to look forward to next year's Etape de Tour. Now I'm not sure that the 2025 Etape de Tour looks like the most difficult Etape on record, but we'll come back to that later in the video. The 130 kilometer route takes in five categorized climbs, over 4,500 meters of climbing, destination is the High Tarente Ski Resort of La Plagne. Now the observant watchers will notice that I chopped 300 metres off the elevation game in the initial introduction at the top of the Corme de Roseland, but I wasn't going back up there to do a retake. Albeville gets the prize as the start town for the 2025 Etape de Tour, and I think this is the third time that the Etape has started in Albeville. If it's your first Etape, I've put together a free guide to help you with the event and there's a link to that in the description below. Now rolling out from Albeville, it's an easy false flat 11 kilometers to the foot of the first climb in Yuzhan. Now this is likely to be along the dual carriageway, which is a nice safe wide road. However, the pace will no doubt be high and the road narrows enter in Yuzhan and you have to go over a railway crossing and negotiate some roundabouts. Through Yuzhan, and we're on to the start of the first climb of the Etape de Tour 2025, the Côte de Henri sur Eugène. Nothing too taxing on this climb, average 5%, it's 11 kilometres to the summit, and you've got to just treat it as a warm up. You're climbing just over 600 metres. Now, this is the village of Henri sur Eugène, and to be honest, there's not a lot here. If you're desperate for the toilet, there's one on the left. The village is also not the top of the climb. The summit comes about 600 metres later, just where the van's parked on the left here. There's no fancy coal board, but I'm expecting that they'll put some kind of banner in on the day of the event. Over the top, and this is possibly the most technical descent of the day. It's short and sharp, and you're immediately onto a minus 10% ramp. There's no consistency in the bends, and the road surface, as I write, isn't super smooth. Once you join the main road into the Gorge Dali, this is possibly the second most dangerous point on the whole of the 2025 Etape de Tour course. Now you really don't want to get this wrong and you need to exercise extreme caution here. Turning left over the bridge and we've already got some brand new Tour de France 2025 tarmac on this section up to Crest for land. Now there's a couple of ways up the Col de Sese from the north side. This one averages 6.4% over just shy of 14 kilometres to the summit. So climbing up towards Crestville Land, the road is super shaded here. So even if we're in the middle of a heat wave next July, it should be a nice and cool climb, especially at this time of the morning. Now I'm guessing on the day the organisation will have a water stop somewhere between Albeville and here but if you are desperate for water when you get to Crest of the Land just opposite Barrow Sports here we've got one of these water fountain things which you just turn the knob now YouTube only seems to care about likes and subscribes so if you are finding this video useful I'd be super grateful if you give it a thumbs up and also consider clicking the subscribe button, thanks. Swinging right in the village centre, this is the most challenging section of the climb. I just feel that it drags on past the ski apartment blocks as the road ramps up to double digits. After maybe three kilometres or so, you're into the ski meadows and looking to your left, you can see the other route of the Col de Sese climb from the Flume Majev direction. As the bends switch you around and you're suddenly looking north, that's the Col de Zarevi Valley in the distance. Finally, the road goes under a ski chairlift and then dips down slightly and plateaus before more switchbacks and you join the Flume Road with just one kilometre to go to the Col de Sese summit. 
Now there's a massive car park at the top of the Col de Saisy and I would anticipate that there's going to be a major feed station here. There's also this fancy coal marker board which make a great photograph for your Etape de Tour 2025 photo album. Saisy is a popular ski resort that you've probably never heard of. It's mainly French visitors. It's also super popular in the summer with mountain bikers. Onto the Col de Saisy south side descent and the route drops down from 1,650 metres right back down to 700 metres above sea level. It's not a technical descent, but it's long. It's around about 17 kilometres all the way down to the valley floor. Now for me, this is the best view of the Etape de Tour 2025. You're looking at the west face of Mont Blanc, the ski area of Le Contamine and the Col de Mont Joli. Now as you continue on the descent, there's a fairly straight section here, so no doubt you're going to be hooning it down here at your terminal velocity, but suddenly there's a sharp bend around to the left, immediately followed by a switch back to the right. The road then drops down to this junction, where it swings around to the right, and the road kicks up and you're onto a climb for a couple of hundred metres. Morning. I wouldn't be inclined to use this water trough. Now, into the last two kilometres of the descent, there are two speed ramps here for traffic calming. Finally, you're at the bottom of the descent, out onto the main road from Alberville. Next stop, Beaufort. This is the home of the famous cheese, and you'll pass the Fromagerie Cooperative on the left here. Now, there's lots of water options in Beaufort. Take some care over the cobbles and the traffic calming, and the road surface is a bit dodgy here. There's a green water fountain right on this corner. However, I don't think this is the safest option. The next two are much easier. As we wind up through Beaufort village, there's a water fountain on the right here, and another one in this construction on the left. Onwards and upwards, the next village is Aresh. Again, there's a fountain on the right here, and another green fountain exiting the village. These are the last public water fountains before you join the very narrow Col du Pré. Now my obsession with water fountains comes from the fact that I'm easily dehydrated when I'm out riding. There's a super useful website called Opatable Info. I've put a link to that in the description below and it lists every water fountain in France. The Col de Pre from Beaufort is a nasty climb, and whilst the gradient only averages 7.7% over 12.6 kilometres to the summit, it's especially after the village of Arash where the start of the tough part of the climb really begins. It's super narrow, there's constant switchbacks, and I have a feeling that this could become congested with riders later in the morning. Now I'm going to say that this is the toughest climb of the 2025 Etap de Tour. Now just a footnote here, if you are staying out to watch the Tour de France, camper vans are anti-D, they're completely not allowed on the Col de Pre with it being so narrow. I'm just going to step away from the Etape de Tour route for two seconds. If you're planning a cycling adventure in the French Alps and you need help with it, whether it's for the Etape de Tour, the Marmot or anything else such as Geneva Nice, you can contact me through our website breathebike.com and there's a link to that in the description below. We've also got an airport transfer company called resortrides.com. So if you're coming skiing in the French Alps from Geneva to Chamonix, Megève, Saint-Gervais, Le Contamine, we can certainly help with your private airport transfers. There's a link again in the description below. Now back to the Etape de Tour 2025. Now while I was out filming, I couldn't get to the summit of the Col de Pre on this occasion, but that was because the road's been resurfaced at the moment. I'll come back to the Col de Pre in the spring and do a more detailed video. Over the top of the Col de Pre it's a stunning descent but don't let the views lapse your concentration. Whilst the bends are wide open it's still super narrow.
Now, as you can see here, even as you go over the dam, it's still super narrow. The road surface is rough at the end of the dam as you ramp up towards the Corme de Rosaland road. Now, once you've joined the Corme de Rosaland, you have some respite from the climbing as you ride around the lake. There's some cafes here, and I think it's likely they'll be cashing in for the Etape de Tour 2025, selling drinks and snacks. This is a good opportunity to spin out the legs here, ready for the next section. So from the dam to the summit of the Corme de Rosaland, it's about 10 kilometers. However, only around six kilometers are climbing. Now, as you look across the lake, you can see the road on the cliff face on the opposite side. And with 16,000 riders, it's gonna be a spectacular sight as you'll see the competitors snaking around the lake and onto the climb. The road initially ramps up steeply for around two kilometers, and again there's fresh tarmac on the road, with a lot of work being done here before the snow arrives. Don't forget to look down to your left to see where you've climbed from. Now this mountain refuge here is a good marker point and marks the end of the steep part of the climb. Now there's another water fountain here, and it's one of the green cylinder types where you just spin the top. As we approach the summit, the gradient continues to ease and the last two kilometers are pretty easy. That said, at this point, you're gonna have 82 kilometers in your legs uh, with just one climb to go. So that's the summit of the Corme de Roseland, 1,968 meters above sea level. Now this next footage is from my back catalog of videos and you can click up to the left here to see the video in full, which is climbing the south side of the Corme de Roseland. Over the top, it's initially a long, non-technical descent towards Borg San Maurice, and with fantastic scenery and a glimpse of the summer ski glacier at Teen in the distance. The road's wide here, the bends are wide open. But don't get too overconfident. About halfway down the descent, this is what I consider to be my number one danger point in the whole of the Etape de Tour 2025. The road narrows suddenly, and the bends start to tighten quite quickly and you need to look out for this sign. So this yellow marker here on the descent down into Borg is where Johan Brunil went over the edge in the Tour de France. This marks the start of a technical section. It's narrow and the bends come quick and fast. After this section, the road tends to straighten out for a while and soon you can start to see the valley floor and Borg San Maurice below. Now I'm sure that there'll be a feed station somewhere around here but if you're desperate for water, there's another water fountain in front of the train station. Now the route from Borg Saint Maurice down towards M and the foot of the final climb. For the actual Tour de France, it's gonna use the route nationale, but I can't see them closing that for the Etape de Tour. So we're gonna to have to come back to this final section in the springtime, where we'll also have a closer look at the final climb up to La Plan. So what's your thoughts on the Etape de Tour 2025 route? More difficult than recent events? Or does it look easier on paper? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I guess success in the Etape de Tour is mainly how you feel on the day. I think, have you slept right? Have you got your nutrition right? And critically, did you do enough training over the winter months? Looking back to the Etape de Tour from Animas to Morzine, for me, that was a complete suffer fest and that was mainly down to the heat. So that's me, just over the dew plan, about 7 hours 40. That is the toughest attack that I have ever done. If the Etape de Tour 2025 is blessed with a cooler day, I think it will be a slightly easier day in the saddle. Who knows? One thing's for sure, the Etape de Tour is as popular as ever, with 16,000 places being sold out within an hour, even after the challenges of last year where the date was changed at the last minute. In some respects, the logistics for this Etape are slightly less complicated than last year's. 
Whatever happens, it's going to be a tough day in the saddle with 4,500 meters of climbing and you will have definitely earned your post-event meal, whether it's pasta, beer or pizza, whatever takes your fancy. So all that it remains for me to say is good luck with your training over the winter months as you focus towards the Etap de Tour 2025. If you've got any questions about the route or anything else in relation to cycling in the Alps, you can drop those in the comments below. And hopefully we'll see you on the start line of the Etap de Tour 2025. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Cycling in the Alps.